Hi guys, it is May 12, 2019, American Crazy. I have a file, a bookmark file, American Crazy, and it's just loading up with articles. I need to start unloading those articles, so I'm going to start right now. Now, for those who sent articles who contributed to my file on American Crazy, thank you. Uh, I'll start with this. Oh, and let me, before I start, let me, let me, let me, let me say to those who believe that Americans, the ordinary American, the average American, has nothing to do with this nightmare that we are living, well, you really need to rethink that belief, uh, because beliefs don't necessarily mean it's the truth. It's just a belief you have. Americans have a great deal to do with this nightmare. In fact, they are now, oh, well, bonkers is increasing all over the place. But um, who do you think is in your town council? You know, those members. Are they not Americans? Who, who are the police? Are they not Americans? Who are the uh, state legislature? Uh, well, starting with California, they could be illegal immigrants, okay, but most states, they're Americans. Yes, Americans have everything to do with this nightmare. A California teacher on medical leave for breast cancer has to pay for her substitute. You get 10 days of paid medical leave, it, uh, teachers, 10 days of paid medical leave, if you need more time, Hell, you can get 100 days of sick leave, but you got to pay for it. You're kidding. Uh, substitutes, $203.16 a day. So this woman, on top of her medical bills, has to pay for the substitute that goes in to teach, the substitute that's covering her class. Does that sound sane? Does that sound fair? Wow. You know, and, and it, some of these articles that I go through, no, I can't, you know, confirm every single one. And a lot of people say, oh, this is bullshit, mainstream media just putting up, you know, lying propaganda. Well, if that's the case, we still have a really big problem in our country. But, uh, yeah, they cite the law, so I think that this is quite right. So you got you guys ten days paid medical leave. After that, you gotta pay. Wow. Okay. Oh, a great grandmother arrested at Disney World for having C B D oil in her purse. Oh my god. And it was peppermint. It was peppermint. C B D oil. Uh her first time to Disney World. She was arrested. A great grandmother, I believe, yeah, 69 years old, woman from North Carolina visiting Disney World when she was arrested after an Orange County deputy discovered CBD oil in her purse. What was he doing in her purse? Is it true that you get searched before getting in, going into Disney World? Oof, boy. Uh, yeah, well, mm. she was prepared. She even had a note from her doctor in case of this very situation, but nope. They arrested her, threw her in jail for 12 hours. She was behind bars, and eventually she was released on a $2,000 bond. Thank God. Well, <laughs> if she ever comes into South Carolina, watch out. It's sold. CBD oil is sold in stores across Florida, yet it's technically illegal in the Sunshine State. Okay, so they don't do anything about the selling of it in gas stations, health food stores, drug stores. Uh, they're selling it to the public, but then they arrest the people who have it within their possession? Something wrong with that? 
Okay, uh, a little drop of oil with the CBD is a felony, and that's in Florida. But you can have up to 19.9 grams of leaf marijuana, and it's a first-degree misdemeanor. Okay, something needs to be done with these state legislators legislators who are writing these laws because they're insane they're insane oh but wait a second mm. ten thousand uh, a two thousand dollar bond um, you make money you know on these arrests and oh you get the taxes from the CBD oil that is sold all right well actually it does make sense because well the state of Florida makes far more money with these insane laws. She never even had a speeding ticket. Never even had a speeding ticket. The charges were dropped, which is a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, but here, uh, the police officer, officer said, I was just following the law. The good old order follower, who is an American just your average American following the law. The order followers. In a North Carolina swamp, researchers finds researcher finds tree older than Christianity. How is that possible? Because I thought that God created the world like two thousand years ago or so. And he created the trees and everything. So if that tree is older than Christianity, hmm, what does that say about Christianity? What is um, the Bible, the 2,000 years? I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused. U.S. adults spending crushing amounts of cash playing video games? Adults? Well, yeah, okay. Do we have a childlike adult population? Yes. Have we been grossly um, infantilized? Yes. Do we need to grow up? Yes. They're playing it on their smartphones. Ah, those devices. That actually can get you addicted. Oh, okay, well... 164 million U.S. adults play video games, a figure that's 20% more than a year ago and 85% more than four years ago. A staggering $43.4 billion industry in 2018. Whoa! Yeah, and it's not only men. Female gamers between 18 and 34 love Candy Crush, Assassin's Creed, and Tomb Raider. And typically play that on a smartphone. And men in the same age group play God of War, Madden, NFL, Fortnite. Don't know anything about any of these games. I do know neighbors who sit and stare at their smartphone playing Candy Crush. Asked one of them, what is Candy Crush? She could not explain what the game is. She just plays it. But the Gen X and the Baby Boomers, yay! Go for it! Now, we have so many Americans who are being destroyed every single day. We have very serious problems. We've got the takeover of our country going on, the loss of freedom, the Constitution dead, and hey, let me pick up my video game, because I just want to have fun. Um, Diana Ross was felt up at the New Orleans airport. Bad treatment from the TSA it was over the top, 
makes me want to cry. I am feeling violated. I still feel her hands between my legs. You know, when the TSA first started feeling up Americans, very shortly after 9-11-2001, I knew we were heading in the wrong direction. That Americans were not putting a stop to it. I knew that we were done. That was a long time ago. So yeah. Okay, well, you know, a totalitarian system, a police state, fascism, whatever, call it whatever, uh, it eventually comes to everyone. No one is spared. No one is spared in this sick, twisted, evil system that, unfortunately, is, um, well, the cement has been laid out and it's drying. After death, Washington State set to become the first to allow human composting. Soylent Green. It's a unique option. Uh, Seattleites will soon have. So, you can cremate, you can bury, or you can compost that body that dies. It's the first state to become a <laughs> a natural organic reduction state, um, at, at, at passing that off as a burial alternative, commonly referred to as human composting. The process will turn a body into soil within weeks. We can show the way for the world after a better way in dealing with this universal human experience. Recompose. It's a company they it's develop a method to turn bodies into soil so those who have passed can give back to the earth. Americans are largely faced with only the two options which are unsustainable burial or crema uh, cremation. Cremation, well you're releasing greenhouse gases and particulates and well, these plots, you know, burial plots, it's not sustainable because Eventually, the world will just become a burial plot, right? I have so many people who have died. I'm surprised we're not a burial plot already. Oh, I guess it's because a lot of people cremate. All right. Um, they use alkaline hydrolysis, which is already legal in 19 other states. This process uses heat, pressure, water, and chemicals. Chemicals to reduce remains. Chemicals, human soil. Okay, um, well, think about how toxic our bodies are. Mm -mm -mm. Wouldn't you love to have an American body put into your compost, into your soil? Think about all of the chemicals in that body. San Francisco bans anti-car <laughs> burglar burglar warning signs because they're racist. What? You know, in New York, there was on my car a everybody was putting them on their window. We there's nothing in this car, and people would leave their um, their you know that <laughs> oh my god um, that thing that you open on your dashboard and yeah it has a name okay ah uh, okay well they would leave it open I can't believe I can't think of glove compartment okay Ooh. Leave it open. Uh, you would, and and some would just leave their windows open because so many cars were being broken into. San Francisco is banning this 
Oh, they say it's racist. They say it's racist. You want to know why? Well, because the sign here, white backgrounds with black stick figures, pretty much the worldwide default for any simple efficient warning sign. Oh, but San Francisco Looney Tunes have decided this is racist. Okay. Well, uh, San Francisco actually put up signs on a bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, where people were parking and there were frequent break-ins of these cars. So local authorities posted signs thoughtfully warning visitors to not leave cash or valuables in their vehicles. And oh my god, it's racist. Friggin racist. I can't believe it. Oh, well they took care of that too. They decided to put up these signs and make the figure orange so nobody would get offended. Yeah. Lots of uh, important things these uh, politicians are engaged with, right? San Francisco, do you not have more important pressing problems than your city spending money to put up the signs to warn you not to leave valuables in the car because you're stupid and you need that warning? Okay, well, that's the first thing. The second thing, they take down the signs and put back up these signs, or maybe they plastered, you know, some um, sticky, you know, paper over the signs. Oh, I, d but it's all money, and you don't have more pressing problems than this. My God, I guess Russia is racist as well. In fact, every country is racist because they have black stick figures on a white background. Okay. A fat sex therapist. Uh, well, she gave a talk at a college in Minnesota that this woman was actually allowed to give this talk. Fat sex therapist compares fitness trainers to Nazis, children's dieting to sexual assault. Whoa. Okay, compared personal trainers to Nazis. Compared a parent putting a child on a diet to sexual assault. Are you friggin' kidding me? Oh, wait a second. I experience diet culture as a form of assault because it impacts the way I experience my body. And because I'm a narcissist and that's the way I think, you know, I, and therefore all of you, oh, wait, I experience it as assault. That means I am going to, as a therapist, as a professional, uh, bleed it into my therapy, my narcissistic way of thinking. I'm going to give talks and instruct parents that they shouldn't put their children on diets because it's it's sexual assault. Well, um, how could the college actually allow this woman to talk at this college? I don't get it. But personal trainers to Nazis? We've got a problem. We've got a problem. <laughs> we, 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 we. All right. The field of psychology, psychiatry, mental health. You want to tell me that Americans are not a part of this nightmare? When we've got therapists like this, uh, and you know, erase this focus of this therapist, that we have therapists who are engaged in therapy, uh, using the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, the Bible of Psychiatry, diagnosing people, putting people on 
all of these medications, putting children on these medications, diagnosing them with bullshit diagnoses that have no uh, basis, no scientific basis, no foundation in science, just these, hey, subjective diagnoses. All right, well, when you have this, these, this, Hopkins study, half of schizophrenia cases misdiagnosed, most just have anxiety. You really think the average American is not involved? Okay. Uh, a significant number of people declared schizophrenic by their doctors may be misdiagnosed. Oh, you just had anxiety. Shoot. Why didn't I get that? Well, it was a close call between anxiety and schizophrenic, so... Yeah, we've got a problem. <laughs> Media multitasking using multiple digital devices at the same time is linked to obesity. Switching from gadget to gadget can impair self-control when it comes to eating, making it harder to resist the temptation to snack on unhealthy foods. Well, I would say, you know, that the frequencies coming from these devices, whether you switch from gadget to gadget or not, is contributing to obesity, well, in that we never get really any exercise anymore and we're playing Candy Crush, um, that can lead to obesity. And I've actually watched it happen in a neighbor here. But to link it to switching from device to device? Okay. Well, all right, let's just move on. North Texas, Mr. Jim's restaurant temporarily shuts down after employees allegedly put Miralax on pizza. So, well, go to Mr. Jim's, order some pizza after switching from gadgets to gadgets. So maybe that'll help with keeping you from getting obese. Okay, um, I've come across a lot of articles lately about people working in restaurants and these pizza places, fast food restaurants, uh, chain restaurants, putting stuff in food that, frankly, I wouldn't trust going to any of them. So, the pizza place temporarily shut down. Miralax, isn't that a, is it, what is it? It's a diuretic or a laxative? Okay, according to police, the employee who ate the tainted pizza is now sick. Oh, it's a laxative, I'm sorry. Laxative. Uh, I'm not too up on all of this stuff, so... Uh, it was sold to the public. Okay. When you die, you know you're dead. Because your brain keeps working. Scientist claims. You know what my biggest fear is? Having a stroke, not being able to move or talk, but my brain continues working. <laughs> now, what does this do to our brain-dead MRIs? Or brain dead. Okay, someone's brain dead, dead. Because, well, wait. All right, so they're still alive uh, in comas or unconscious. And you hear from a doctor they're brain dead, but their body is still alive. They're brain dead. So once you pull the plug and they're dead, their brain, I guess, reactivates. Okay, you know, this doesn't, it, it, it's, it's not even, it's not a blip on the radar in terms of what I have on my bookmark file, in my bookmark file. We are literally going insane. There's evidence of it every single day. 
every single day. New studies suggest your consciousness carries on, functioning after your heart stops beating and your body movements fail. Well, that it may very well be true. Um, I actually had an experience decades ago when I heard a doctor pronounce me dead and I was in a very strange state and I don't want to get into it but we've heard from a lot of people who have been dead and come back and they see and they hear what's going on around them so it doesn't really uh, you know I kind of threw this in just because I I get I got that and I was like oh god no don't don't make it be true ah uh, I can't move I can't talk but my brain will still be working oh okay um we don't know anything about consciousness the soul the spirit despite what studies may find we don't know. And that's the great mystery of life. And that a whole lot of people believe that we are just energy. And when the body dies, there's a lot of people who believe in reincarnation, that we actually do come back. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's not some unreasonable crazy belief uh, that a lot of people do believe that and it could very well happen that's one of the reasons why I say it's really important for the individual to learn what they need to learn to raise their consciousness in this lifetime because if you don't you'll be coming back just living the old crap that you're living now anyway guys um, life really is just utterly insane and frankly <laughs> this kinda sums it up yeah, Americans. We've gone insane. An age of insanity when an ex-barmaid has a national voice. We can't see through the bullshit. Oof. Well, I guess not. When these people are our quote-unquote national leaders, you know we've gone over the edge. This country is a psychiatric institution. Institution, it is an open air asylum. It it and this there's no getting out of it. It's gonna get worse. The well adjusted to a deeply disturbed society, if they don't resolve you know, those uh, disturbances, they become more disturbed. Now we're looking at, we are living what we have never resolved <laughs> collectively. We are living in a very crazy country. And yes, we all contributed we all contributed. Scary.